So this is the Soma Cosmos uh, drifting memory station. Uh, so it's a memory station that drifts. The contents uh, will drift. It's not synchronous. It's asynchronous and it evolves. It makes the sound alive and not boring, repeating. Uh, it's not just a looper. It's much more than a looper. It's a repeat box, more sophisticated. It's a mixer and it's an effector all at the same time. I've had it for about um, nine months. So I thought I would make a video just to explain um, my experience and some tricks that I uh, found out in the course of using it. So it looks simple, but it's not really simple. Uh, it just has not many knobs, but the interactions between them is can be complex. So the first thing you should do uh, uh, with the Soma Cosmos, as seen with any Soma instrument, is to read the fine manual. Is there for a reason? Uh, any some instrument by design they are not conventional, so they are designed in the genius mind of uh, Vlad Kramer, and with uh, usability in mind, and playability, and uh, creativity. So you should always read the manual and do the exercises, the basic exercise to learn the basic functions. Um, that you can use in the course of your music creation. So I assume that you have done that and I will uh, explain uh, my process with this instrument. Um, so to give you ideas how to implement uh, the use in your music. So Cosmos is an um, optimal tool to bring on performances and concerts, so you should always have the manual with you. Uh, it can be PDF uh, in your phone, in your tablet, in your laptop. Always have the manual at hand because if you stress out and forgot how to do something or you don't need a reminder about some function, and you might not have internet to download the manual, so always have the manual with you. And further, the blur drift and drive function functions. Um, I even them having have them in print here, so I always I can check out something real quick if I mix up uh, how I remember how they work. Uh, because they work different for every of this mode here. So I just I will go over everything again uh, just to make sure when the same base and then I will explain some combinations. So the first thing you should check is the in of your instruments. From I uh, took off the liras for clarity and I have the pipe directly into the cosmos. So uh, if I you always turn the cosmos last on last, it's just like a mixer. If you turn it on while it's on, it can be uh, making not pretty sounds. I can charge the, the device with the input. So you turn on everything that's going in there and you turn on the Cosmos last. And you see doing this routine to show that it's fine. Second, if you want um, to remove the filter that uh, removes some parasite and background sounds, depending on your setup, you will do this combination, which is in the manual uh, HPF, LPF airways. And then you turn off high pass and low pass filter, and your Cosmos will be will have no filter at all. Um, if you don't want that, you turn it off and back on. 
and it will do the routine. Always check the routine. Um, so when you have sound, you always check that your volume uh, of the device matches um, the input level required for the Cosmos. So I'm holding my phone here, so I cannot show you, but basically if you rehearse with the same settings, you will know which input volume you need for uh, optimal flow, flow of the sound. So for the pipe is always this, because I always change it here anyways, on the instrument. And the output volume, uh, depending on your setup, um, I always have it somewhere on here, which is optimal and has, has some margin for extra boost if needed. And then the first thing you will, the first thing you will configure is the mode, the main mode. Um, so this, this is two delay, two delay lines, four delay lines, a huge reverb and granular mix. So basically you will use two delay lines for, uh, as a beginner setup, just to run the instrument and experiment. And um, this is the side of the uh, reverb. So you will use, for example, middle size, and you can use this for experimenting as you get started. The bread and butter of this instrument will be the four delays line. Um, again, different, uh, the, uh, the, uh, different reverb sizes. Um, for the four delays line, the most optimal is the larger one. While for the two delays line, it seems that for my taste is more optimal the middle size, but it's up to you. It's just a matter of taste and creativity. So the bread and butter of the Cosmos will be this mode with four delays line lines and it was a larger room. And from there on, you need always to use uh, or have in mind what are doing these. So um, I have some idea what it does by experience, but I cannot repeat it without reading. So I will read for you um, the blur. Uh, so in these two modes, at cross feedback between delay lines, which leads to a gradual blurring of their contents. So basically it will um, blur the sound bytes that you have recorded in the memory. And it's non-destructive blurring. So you, you can have them very, very, you can have, for example, if you record a few times from here, on off and you blur them, it will be very intertwined sound. And then if you turn this down, it will unblur. It will uh, unmix those sounds and you will still have them separable. Whereas Drift uh, modulates the panorama of delays with an asynchronous LFO whose frequency in turn is modulated by a slow conic signal, whatever that means. Um, so Drift, in my experience, what it does uh, subjectively, it will take the sound bite that you recorded and it will mix them uh, in a destructive fashion uh, in the sense that you will not be able to recover the original bits. So it will take the sounds that you recorded, uh, mix them and uh, transform them into something different that is not, um, uh, there is no going back. If you go in the high drift and you go back, you will still have the same thing that you had in this level. But if you keep it there, it will keep changing and changing and changing. So it's uh, a drifting process that is not going back. And then drive is like a gentle distortion to the sound, quote unquote. So it's more, uh, as Manuel says, similar to guitar overdrive. So it adds more like uh, peps to your sound. It adds more uh, gravity to your sound. 
and if your sound is way below the maximum volume of the sound processing chain, you can have always some um, basic level. But if your sound is getting too loud, you will always turn this down before you do anything else, because this is this drive will add volume uh, and density to the sound. And then there is the huge reverb hall, which is this has many delay lines and uh, two sizes, which is huge, very huge and immensely huge. And in this mode, which you could call the lazy mode, this blur and drift don't do anything. You can just ignore them. And uh, this is like, this is good for slow compositions where you want the sound that you sound to come back in uh, maybe 20, 30 seconds time. And then uh, have this huge atmospheric effect like you are playing in a huge uh, concert hall uh, with reflective walls or whatever. I will talk about this later. Um, Subcom always have in mind that this suppressor only works when you are recording, it doesn't do anything, and the compressor always works. So if you go on this side, the sound that is in the memory station will compress itself and become more louder over time. Whereas the feedback, um, if you don't care about it, just leave it on one. And you can, if your uh, drifting sound is getting too loud or not pretty, or like a bad mix or whatever, you just, and you don't want to cut it abruptly, you will turn this down. If you want to get down quickly, you will go to uh, null 7. If you want to turn it out very, very quick, you can go to the slower 0, 3. But it's almost the same as turning down the volume. So this will save you if the sound gets too loud. You just use this and turn off the compressor and turn off the drive. Then your sound that is too loud will quickly get back to normal. So, but if you don't take care about it, you just leave it on one on this level. You can even adjust this if it's not correct. The manual explained how. And the mix should always be in, in the middle uh, because there is no point in, um, I mean, if you have to change this, it means something else is not right. So you should always leave this on uh, in, in normal use. It's not used at all. It just stays in the middle because you change out and in manually anyways. And this is my favorite mode. The granular mode will um, take the sound that you recorded. And I will read the manual again. So in this mode, these three are granular mode, blur will quote unquote modulate the position of the grains with a noise signal. So granular mode, uh, mode, what does it do? It takes the sound and it divides it into, uh, like in math, DX. it derivates the sound into very small bits, small bits, and it will go around from a uh, different position randomly in the sound, creating an entirely new sound from the sound you just created. Uh, in Ableton Live, uh, you can check uh, Monolake's uh, granular, granulator tool to have visual support of this kind of process. And it's really, really uh, intuitive when you watch your um, uh, add-on in this mod, in this uh, Ableton module. So in <clears throat> granular mode, blur will modulate the position of the grain with the noise signal. So basically, if you turn it all the way down, it will stay in the same spot and won't be pretty at all. So the more you bring this up, the more it will um, make uh, noisy the switching position of the bar that plays the sound. So it will be more chaotic, basically. Uh, I always leave it between this and this. I mean, in the upper quadrants. And I just always listen to the result to know what should adjust because depending on, depending on what you're doing, the result can be entirely different. The drift 
in granular mode we'll um reading again modulate the positions of the grains with an asynchronous lfo whose frequency the frequency of the lfo in turn is modulated by a slow chaotic signal whatever that means um i have noticed intuitively that when you in granular mode use drift it will create a new world more different sound faster and uh, but the result can be dramatic so if you had a good sound and you pump this up you could ruin your sound so careful and always change slowly 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 and monitor the results while doing it so to make sure you know destroying the live sound that you have and by live sound i mean live as in uh, live uh, on stage as well as i mean that the sound is alive there's a, your sound is alive in this thing where you play and you could kill it with this instantly or you could ruin it and never have it back so you should always record your uh, even practice just in case you find a really good sound and you don't know how to recreate later just like with the era with the cosmos you should always record your sessions and if nothing good comes of it, you just can delete it. But uh, if something good comes of it, you can keep it and use it later. Even create a bank of sound that you can use in other compositions that are not live or not performances. Um, so in this mode, I always have, I'll restart with drift. A blur starts a little higher because there was not doing it because remember if you do this the sound is horrible it jumps in one position so i always start like from for example here with blur and drift somewhere lower and as i want the sound to evolve i use increase these and uh, if you don't have them in the same position if i want it's really experience and intuition like um if you hear what it does when you change it while you play then you know what to do uh, i mean it's like uh, it gets really intuitive there is no rule what's good or bad because depending on what you're doing um, the result can be different so but usually i start like this in granular and then it can evolve up to this or like this or whatever just how the where the sound takes me And drive in uh, granular mode is uh, really good. So always have, always use some drive. It can even go very, very high drive. It doesn't really make the volume louder. It makes the sound more um, uh, coarse and uh, instantly is uh, recreated, remixed in the granulars, in the grains. So, I mean, you always change one set setting at a time. And you change it slow, and you can always can always monitor the results, and then you can adjust accordingly. Uh, so like this, and I have noticed that for me this middle mode is the best in Gondola, and because in this mode the grains are finer, but the sound fades out very quickly. Whereas in this mode the grains are bigger, and but you can. You, you, you can hear the chopping, like you can hear, uh, in, in my style at least, you can hear that it's chopping, you can hear the bits being chopped, and you can hear the bits uh, being one next to the other, shoulder to shoulder. And for ambient, it's not pretty, so I don't really use this mode, but I, if I go granular, I always use this mode, for example. I mean, usually. And this, if you're very quiet sound, and you increase the thing back a little, then you can have good results. But uh, to start using granular, I recommend to use this mode all the time. And then you have, um, so I already, already talked about this, but there is also the combinations of these. Uh, and so it depends if you're recording all the time or not all the time. For example, if you record all the time and you want a trail of your what you just played, trailing you, you are playing now, then you leave it this on all the time, but you turn the thing back down, way, uh, way down, at, for example, like this. And you also uh, use the suppressor 
so not to accumulate too much sound that will be uh, like a cacophony. So if you go overdub and use record all the time, you should use feedback way lower than 1.0 .0 and the suppressor. And as a rule of thumb, you can use them so that they will go in like in a square angle. For example, like this, they form a square angle like this. Uh, it, usually get, it usually makes a good mix. And even if you don't record all the time, but record bits and introduce bits into the uh, memory lanes, uh, this using feedback lower than 1.0 and using some suppressor will always guarantee that your sound doesn't overblow and become uh, loud and not pretty. And so if you do not use constant recording, it means you are playing um, something and you hear good beats coming out of your performance and you record that good beat and then turn off recording and it start to being blended in the live sounds and you start playing over it. For example, um, you can play uh, some notes, sing some notes, um, make a, a chord with vocals, for example, and then you have uh, like a choir going on. And then you sing over this choir a different gamut. For example, if you sing some high notes, you can sing some bass after this, or conversely, you can record some bass, have some bass going, and then stop recording and start to sing higher notes or use instruments that are higher or notes that are higher. So you, you create a, a font, a uh, background, and then you sing over it or play additional music over it. So <clears throat> if you record intermittent, which is the more active way to play, to use this um, station, if you use feedback lower than one and compressor, you will have a quiet um, background sound uh, making a comeback. While what you play now will not uh, be uh, overly invasive to that background sound, which in, to whom you want to give a new life, new energy. If you use feedback to one and suppressor and record, it means you will delete what you had and what you're recording now will become your new background. Um, if your background sounds getting really weak, you will use compressor and feedback uh, higher than one and play over and what you play over as well as the background will both increase in volume and uh, constitute like a charge of uh, both your live uh, inputs and the residual sounds will come louder together. But again, use with caution because it can really get fast out of control if with feedback higher than 1.0 and if these things get red, you quickly turn off the drive, I use suppressor, turn to this uh, way lower than one and record while suppressing. And this will go back to normal. Um, high pass filter, if you have too much bass, you can use this or if you are uh, what you're doing does too much bass, you just want to add some higher, you use this. And there are three modes uh, for this. You can, it says in the manual how to use them and never ever use this. I control the input directly. Same with low pass filter. If your instrument is too um, loud in the high end for what you can do, you just low pass filter. Um, arrays, pressing arrays uh, will erase gradually what you have in the memory now. So for example, if you have 10 seconds sound looping and you do this one second, it will delete the latter part of what you recorded. And if you press this a long time, it will quickly delete everything. Whereas arrays and arrays all will erase instantly what you did. And there is the reverse sound, which will play what you just did in reverse. 
uh, I never used this. I prefer my song how it was in, uh, created, but it might be interesting uh, to know to do if you know what you're doing. And there is one more combination which I forgot. So we'll open the manual here on my computer. Um, yeah, if you hold HPF airways and record at the same time, it will uh, sum the signal of left and right and send them to both Cosmos channels, which means you can record two mono sources at once, which can be useful because, uh, for example, if you play two instruments, if you are two performers with, for example, a guitar and a soma pipe and use two mono inputs, the, the input that's there will be heard only on the left and the input who is here will be heard only on the right until you start recording, which is not pretty because you might want to play for a few minutes even without recording and you have like double mono, it's kind of, but uh, not really beautiful. But as soon as you start recording, these two inputs will blend and there will be no left and right. It will be a mix, which is stereo. So if you play in the constantly recording mode with uh, this like knobs down, then you can do it like that without using this mode. If you plan to use um, two mono sources, you can use this mode with these three buttons at the start. And then you will have two mono inputs that will not be uh, stuck to one side. And as soon as you start recording, it will be blended into a beautiful stereo anyways. Uh, and so, as I said, these three will turn off the noise gates, uh, which depending if you want to have some background noise, uh, for example, if you have an old electric guitar that makes beautiful background noise, then you can turn this down, turn this off with these three. Uh, fine adjustment of the USB, uh, it's in the manual, I explained how to do it. I never had to use it. And then the rear panel, uh, just have basic stereo uh, left and right input here. Power this um, USB port for flash drive updates of ROM, EPROM. And then the uh, output with left and right jacks and output of uh, stereo headphones. So you have you can use the Cosmos as a mixer with two outputs. One output will record and one output will go to the loudspeakers um, because this is like conventional stereo. Um, so if you're on the road with a backpack, you can use this as a mixer and plug in the venue's uh, sound system with standard cables uh, and you're good to go. So that's it, that's my take on the Soma Cosmos. Um, again, this mode is for getting started or if you want not too much effect, you just want some backgrounds uh, trailing your sounds. This is the most active way to play it because Blur and Drift will constantly work on your sounds as you command it. This is lazy mode if you want a huge uh, space effect and I uh, don't want to care about using the brown drift. It's more for quieter uh, compositions like uh, more solemn or I guess uh, calm, slow paced, ultra slow paced, paced composition are good in this mode. And after a few months, only I started to use this and now it's my favorite mod because it really creates a rich sound, texture sound that you couldn't recreate on any other way than used with grains. 
whatever your instruments, whatever you, what you're uh, singing or playing guitar or playing a synthesizer is in there. Uh, this module create an entirely new sound that no one can ever recreate even by chance. Because it's too, I mean, it's so random that the randomness of it creates a sound from different universe. Uh, don't explain it. And even if you record in a computer, from, for example, I record this. Uh, this is going to my interface for recording. Always monitor with headphones. Uh, if your Cosmos is the final chain of your setup, always monitor with your headphones. On your front stage, you put this on the monitor, a feedback monitor, <coughs> to make sure you instantly know what you're doing. Because if you use feedback from a, a DAW, a laptop with a program, a digital audio workstation, and you have a lag of even half a second, it can be catastrophic. Uh, because if, you, if you, something goes wrong, you can instantly correct it if you hear it. But if it's delayed, it's going into the system and it gets ugly and you should always monitor your sound with this and the other output for the recording of or a speaker or whatever. So I don't think I forgot anything. Basically you read the manual and you uh, read it several times and you experiment and you read it again. Uh, I mean, reading the manual is paramount. I and mean, uh, there are things I know what they are doing intuitively, but still have to read to to uh, quote what they're doing because uh, to be accurate. And always choose your style right away. If you want gonna record bits and mix them, or if you want to record constantly and be lazy and overdub, then don't forget to turn this down. Uh, yeah, basically it's like a, a kitchen. Cosmos is like a kitchen. We can get creative and get very, very tasty dishes. Only this is more like a solid dish. Uh, these two modes are, uh, these two modes are like cooking solid dishes. Uh, this mode is like doing a chili. Uh, this mode, this mode is like making a soup. If you want, it's more liquid and more creative and for me it's the best mode like but you shouldn't plunge into it right away you should uh, learn the basics and get used to have neural networks in your brain thinking about uh, having your music training you while you play and as i said when you get a cosmos you're never going back i waited a very long time to get one and many times i was tempted to just buy a regular memory station but i did not and i'm glad i did not because when i did have the cosmos uh, my neural networks about having live repeats were a virgin so to speak and so i could right away I write on a blank sheet uh, my routines for um uh, having the drifting memory of the sound i just made so I hope this was useful, and if there are any questions, put them in the comments, I will try to answer. Uh, so, and if you want to get a Cosmos, you go to Soma Science, Soma Science website. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'll see you next time, bye.